Good afternoon, fellow citizens. Uh, my name is Masesa Demiano. I have been your host here on the Citizens uh, Chat Show. I, I do a return on uh, this second, 82nd uh, episode of uh, the Chat Show. We've uh, moved a while. This is uh, episode uh, 82 of uh, the okay. Chat Show. And uh, we thank you very much for being uh, ardent followers and, of course, uh, being with us uh, through this whole process. Uh, our team that has been uh, behind this uh, production has been done a lot of work and uh, we're moving uh, a step that, uh, that is uh, uh, quite uh, impressive for you, the viewers. And your, your comments, your reactions and your feedback has helped us grow uh, this far. Thank you very much uh, for, for all the, uh, the viewers and the followers, both in Uganda, the Kenya and uh, the whole East African region, including uh, the diaspora. Thank you very much and for all the shows that you keep following. Today, and uh, uh, just like uh, uh, the, the whole week that has been uh, Independence uh, Week, 60 years of Uganda, but uh, we want to leave the 60 years and we want to take stock of uh, our past so far, but also importantly is uh, draw, draw some projections for the next 40 years. We need to hit some, uh, or some uh, highlights or the, the, try to scope for, further into the 40 years how much we love to do as a country. And uh, in here, we love to tackle uh, issues, the challenges so far we've, we've faced as a country. Uh, the, we need to discuss uh, our, probably our achievements. And uh, to discuss uh, many of these and much more, I've been joined by uh, my panel of senior, very senior uh, citizens in the country that will help us uh, uh, put some good uh, thoughts on this. Uh, I've been joined by uh, General uh, Mugisha Muntu, he makes uh, another return onto uh, the chat show. Uh, Jeno, you're welcome. Thank you. Yeah, he's, uh, he's a leader in the, in the uh, Alliance for National Transformation. Uh, we always are uh, uh, glad to have you around, Jeno. My pleasure. Yeah. And uh, followed is a uh, regular panelist, uh, uh, Sarah Birete, uh, Dr. Sarah Birete. She's uh, a lawyer, but also the executive director with the Center for Constitutional Governance. Sarah, you're welcome. Thank you, and good afternoon, yeah. viewers. Thank you. And uh, uh, finally, uh, also, our regular panelist is a uh, uh, retired uh, major, uh, Witch Bola. He's a director of external affairs with the uh, National Resistance uh, Movement, NRM, the government, <laughs> like we always say here. <laughs> uh, greetings to the viewers. <laughs> yeah, uh, thank you very much. And uh, right into the, the, the conversation, uh, Jenna, I need to start with you, considering the experience, right into. Uh, the whole process of uh, at least you've covered some good uh, works of, of the country and with your experience we need to first understand of course for our viewers how far and how we need to know what's our achievements as a country so far marking 60 years well we still exist as a country <laughs> 60 years in spite of uh, the ups and downs mm -hmm. Six years, we certainly should uh, be as mature as uh, what 60 makes of human beings. But as a country, we still act in mature ways mm -hmm. <laughs> many times mm -hmm. in the political arena, in the economic arena. But from uh, 62 until now, mm -hmm. the experiences we have gathered, the positive and negative, mm -hmm would be rich enough to enable those who are in power now and those who will be coming in next to learn. Because when you have the capability to learn from experiences, it also enables you to project and know what to do and what to avoid. Mm -hmm. My hope is that we are learning, that we are all learning. Mm -hmm. The number of things which have changed, without doubt, like population growth, that has got nothing to do with the governance. <laughs> the numbers of educated people are many more definitely now than uh, we were in uh, 62. That mm -hmm. also gives uh, a big advantage to those who would want to advance the country mm -hmm. on a very fast pace because uh, um, the human resource is the most critical resource in the development of any country. Therefore, in regard to that, we have got a larger population, we have got uh, a more well-educated uh, population, 
uh, were exposed, significant number of Ugandans who have been exposed. Mm -hmm. They have gone and had experiences in developed countries. So a number of them within Uganda and also a number of them in the diaspora at Ize Core. I believe there are so many that would uh, um, add their effort to any government that would uh, put them to good use. Mm -hmm. Those are advantages without doubt. The issue though is uh, having uh, discipline in governance. That's still lacking. Because you know, as far as I'm concerned, uh, since 62, all the regimes we have had lacked mm -hmm. discipline and focus. One, even when they have got uh, good uh, uh, plans, implementation has always been the problem. Mm -hmm. In the 60s, in 70s, in 80s, until now. Therefore, those who, whether they are within the regime and they would want to do reforms, they would need discipline. If there are those who are outside the regime and would want to do things the right way and uh, um, exploit all the opportunities that there are, the technological developments on the global scale, a well-educated population, and of course what has always existed, fertile soils and, uh, and uh, uh, good climate and uh, um, the beauty of the country itself and uh, the mineral resources, the extent of it, all, all those factors are in place. So it's just a question of those who would have the discipline and focus to exploit all those opportunities and advance the country. Mm. So we just keep hoping that we're going to have a team of disciplined men and women, mm. also who have character, because again, that's another problem we have had. Nothing good can ever happen by accident. Mm. When you look at developed countries, most, mostly those who are, which have developed in a very short span of time, and all of us keep using those examples, in many African countries who do so all the time. You look at countries like South Korea, look at countries like um, Singapore, mm -hmm. you look at uh, a small place, Dubai. What run through all of them, because uh, they, have, they have developed in a very short span of time. You cannot compare them, for example, that the development process like America has gone through, the development process uh, Europe has gone through. Yes. Some of them, their development process has uh, uh, been uh, evolving over centuries, mm -hmm. 100 years, 200 years. But even within the Europe and Germany and Japan, if you also look at the period when they, because later they were destroyed mm -hmm. in the Second World War, you can also use those as experiences. Mm -hmm. In a very short span of time, with the injections of uh, resources like uh, Germany the, from benefiting from the Marshall Plan from America, mm -hmm. what run through is focus and discipline. In Japan and Germany, in recovering from the destruction of the Second World War, mm -hmm. and in uh, South Korea, in uh, Dubai and uh, in Singapore, focus and discipline. And therefore, the utilization of the resources at their disposal to move their societies and communities and countries from where they were to where they are now. A span of between 30, 40 years. Mm -hmm. Literally all those, or, or maybe, maybe 50 mm -hmm. in some cases. Mm -hmm. So one hopes that in our own situation, we are going to have people who make the same conclusion and also have the capability, not just to talk, but really to use the, 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 the levels of focus and discipline that they can build within themselves. Because even when we talk about the Japanese or the, the South Koreans or the Dubai experience or the uh, Singapore, there's nothing that they have that we don't have. Mm -hmm. Because inherently, we also have the same uh, capabilities. Mm -hmm. Just tapping into them, focusing on them, building them, have a critical number of people who can start off and also have the capability to pass on a button. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because another problem we have in Africa. Yeah, <laughs> there are sure. Those who think that they are the only ones. <laughs> mm -hmm. We have seen dictatorships in, in Africa. One party states, 
and then uh, military regimes, and then quasi multi-party systems of governance. But management has always been the biggest problem. Mm -hmm. So we have to change that. So should we say that at least for now, we've uh, probably moved a step from how we were uh, at, 19, at, at, at the independence? Yes, today. yes. I mean, we've, there, there, there mm -hmm. are still, you know, movement. There's mm -hmm. no doubt about that. Even countries like Somalia that has broken down for 20 years or mm -hmm. 30 years, it's still moving. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> still moving because mm -hmm. you find banks operating, you find... Uh, they have got, uh, they have taken advantage of techno technological advancements in the rest of the world. They have got FM stations, they have got TVs, they have got mm. uh, all, all those things. They are there. Yeah. They keep moving. So even in the countries where there isn't focus and discipline, things still move. Dr. Sara, we, we, the president, most of the times on his speeches, he, 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 he quotes so much of uh, the, the number of uh, the kilometers of the roads that he has put up, the GDP from 1962 <laughs> to that. So I would want to, in there, do you see uh, quite a number of achievements that would say, okay, this has really, really moved uh, Uganda from where it was to that? You know, building from what General Munt has said, we need to be mindful that even the extremes of faded states like Somalia, Ivory Coast, these uh, countries in the West, which have coups every two months, mm. they are still moving. Mm. And you can find indicators like banks, like FM stations, like we, uh, NRM usually celebrates in their, mm. in their achievements. Telecoms, which are uh, continental, which are global, you still find them listing that that's an NRM achievement. But away from that, after the 70 years of, of colonial rule, mm. How have we held the torch in the 60 years? To me, the, 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 the nexus of every nation is leadership. Mm -hmm. So when you have a pre-entry exam that you fail or cheat as a country, and you sit and stabilize in a course, but you've been going through cheating when you are called to things are destroyed, another group cheats again. There. Because changing power by coups is like cheating exam. One group comes, let's say it is a really, this group comes, cheats, it goes for nine years, another group comes, cheats, and manages to frustrate everyone, and, and they celebrate their own everything. So that is what we've been going through, failing the pre entry. <laughs> Cheating at every level, mm. you have different groups that run the real in the country by cheating. Mm. This cheats ever this level because how even how Benicho and Karosti, the, 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 he won the first presidential elections, mm. general elections in Uganda, 1961. Wow. How he was cheated out to bring in a body mm. that was the pre entry into independence that we cheated as a country in collaboration with the governor general then and the British, mm. because they did not want a Catholic president. So we come in with the 1961, the, the, the Lancaster independence, we move, four years we go into Uganda crisis. Mm. After also cheating in Adiop, who won the, pre the ceremonial presidential election? Cheating him to bring in Mutas. So we have been cheating at every level, cheating at every level. This group cheats. It hits a roadblock, another group cheats, hits a roadblock. So in Arab, we are waiting for them also to hit a roadblock. Because they've been cheating and from the who, the whatever. So that's how we've run the country, through cheating exams mm -hmm. at every level. So we have failed to get the leadership question right. We have failed to get the constitutional questions right. Mm -hmm. We have failed to get the desks of determining our leaders through free and fair elections. We are now in a climax of mass, the way we run elections. It is like how you can throw a basket of bananas into a bush of a group of monkeys. The, the, the UPDF is grabbing, electoral commission is surrounded, UPDF is in the field beating people, candidates are in bulletproofs. I don't know how many of Genomuntu's rallies were disrupted. So you have this group of monkeys 
running to grab bananas in form of power and they don't care who they crush. We have kidnaps, we have human rights violations, we have all this impunity and torture. We have failed to manage our resources through excessive corruption. As we celebrate the 60 years, we have 12.5 million Ugandans stuck in poverty. We have 38% of the population out of money economy. We are still depending on enclave economy with 70% of Ugandans. Depending on agriculture, where 85% of those are small scale farmers, subsistence farmers. And agriculture, which employs 70% of Ugandans, only contributes 24% of GDP. That alone summarizes the level of poverty. Mm -hmm. There, you can come in with a nice language to justify that. But when you have 70% of the people contributing 24% mm -hmm. of, of the economy, what other name do you dress into such a statistic? Mm -hmm. So yes, we have moved. Because even if, Damien, even if I sat outside in a compound and it rains on me, it, 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 the sunshine comes and finds me, I can only lose the vaseline that I've put on myself. But I will still be there. That's how I would describe Uganda. So uh, the description doesn't show that there is any, some level of achievement in there? We can do much better. It, okay. <laughs> Thank you. Ndugawich. Uh, <laughs> yes. Senarim has been, actually, has, has enjoyed more years into our independence. Uh, do you see some level of progress over the years? Uh, I will start with the, a disclaimer of the, the, the failures. Because English says all is well that ends well. Mm -hmm. So rather start with the bad and end with the good. Just ordinarily speaking, if you're driving from Bara to Kampala with your brother, you rather quarrel from Bara to Masaka, then you laugh from Masaka to Kampala. So, uh, China celebrated recently their 70, 73rd. We were just 13 years younger than China mm -hmm. as a country. Just 13 years. But if you had a calculation to compare how much China has achieved, you give them the allowance of 13 years older you'd see that China by far has done us ahead of us. Mm. So that could show you that if we were progressing at an average speed, we would give China some allowance of the 13 years. But we should be somewhere higher than this. So what's but, the time in the cheating? Yeah, but all, all, all saying that, there are challenges to that, why we missed out on that pace. And I don't want to go to those challenges. But we have really gone, as a country, gone a long way. Mm -hmm. I like to package it the other way around, the oneness of a country. Mm -hmm. And I've said this again. We can't take for granted that the 69 communities in Uganda, which is attached to the schedule of the constitution, mm -hmm. is still one. Because the constitution lists out what is called the indigenous communities as of 1st uh, February 1926 what constitute the current Ugandans. Actually, Langis, Karamojong, Banyankole, and all that. We have remained as one. Please, note that many countries are broken. Sudan are broken. Libya, broke. Somali, broke. Whichever countries are broken. Even if you go to Europe, Yugoslavia was one under Tito. They broke until one time during a World Cup game, Serbia and Montenegro, we are still playing as one country. They qualified to quarterfinal. From quarterfinal, they had that at home. There are two countries. And they are playing well. Said, but if you win this trophy now, where will you take it? Mm -hmm. So countries are broken and broken and broken. But we have remained as one despite our challenges. And you can't take that for granted. Because any poor management, to borrow a diction from General Muntu, any poor management would be into the Republic of Bunyoro or the Republic of Taiso and the Republic of Angola. That's what happened to Somali. Mm -hmm. So the oneness cannot be taken for granted. In infrastructure, we have done so much. Before independence, you could only, I mean, from independence until recently, you could only cross River Nile through Karuma and Jinja. 
But since then, you can cross River Nile from three different bridges. You can cross, there's a new bridge on Jinja, there's a new bridge in Kayonga, there's another new bridge in, a, in the National Park going to Navy, and there are many more roads. You can now access any border of Uganda by tarmac road. Kenya alone, you can access Kenya by four tarmac roads. Till recently, when Obote was overthrown, he passed through some bush to go to Kenya. By the way, Obote didn't pass through Busia or Malaba. He passed through some bush to escape to go to Kenya. That road, that bush, that path Obote followed, it's not a big tarmac road of four Which lanes. You can access Congo by Tamak. You can access Rwanda by Tanam. You can access... Genesis wants clarity. Which, which, which was that? that? Rock yeah. rock? Uh -uh. If you reach Maga Maga, immediately slightly after Maga Maga, you branch on the right. Okay. Just here, very near. Mm -hmm. Then you follow, the, you almost follow the northern part of Lake Victoria. Then you will access Kenya from the southern part of Busia. Okay. Yes. So, so you can now access... Uh, any border of Uganda by Tamak. Mm. South Sudan, I think, by two different Tamak roads, uh, Congo. So all this, we have done it. But you could see even our neighbors like Congo, they really don't have that access. So we have tried there. We have also managed to come with a constitution, a 95 constitution, which was presumably discussed and agreed than compared to the other modes of constitution. Of course, Sarah will say, hey, what are you talking about? But see, we'll have our opportunity. But we discussed the constitution. We have a constitution which was debated and passed by people. And people like General Munt was in that CA. Uh, challenges there too, notwithstanding. The consciousness of the people. The consciousness now is not like the consciousness in the, as we got independence. Ugandans are aware about themselves. They talk what they, they, they agitate. They discuss the political discussion. Sometimes you feel actually we talk more political discussion than production. So therein we are. So we, 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 you can't take that for granted that uh, we have not uh, uh, gone ahead. Finally, uh, the, the list is long, but also like technology. We have tapped in in the technology of the world. We could have sat here and kept quiet. For a long time, even when Chaka Chaka used to sing, mm -hmm. you know, I'm in, t in love with the DJ mm -hmm. in 1986, the FM stations were in South Africa. But for one reason or another, because of our management, it looked like it was very far. In fact, one announcement on Radio Uganda, you would have overthrown the government. Meaning that if something had not been done, possibility that we would be there was there. Because South Africa had the FMs, Chaka Chaka was already singing, you could depict from, depict from her. Because songs is a reflection of materiality. Mm -hmm. You can judge a society with the materiality from the sing, singing and the dancing. So you could see that was really reflected in South Africa, that there are very many FMs they want, but we are far behind them. A mere announcement on Radio Uganda, the government was over to the throne. So, Sarah will say, well, the world has developed, but I'm also saying with an, a stroke of a pen for poor management, we would be out of that world global development. Mm -hmm. But here we are. So, notwithstanding, we have moved as a country. Take in this room, you could see that in this room, according to some countries like in Europe, where Andorra has 5,000 people, you have listened to 37,000 people, Macedonia 150. If we had mishandled Uganda, by now all of us would be different. We would be from the Republic of Lango, maybe for them, they would be from the Republic of Ankole, you would be from the Republic of Bugisu, you would be from which republic? And all this. But we are here <laughs> as a country. So we have moved. <laughs> Thank you very much. On a lighter note, mm. I wish to inform Afanda Wichi that uh, even Congolese, mm. it was not only Chaka Chaka singing. Even Congolese were singing and we are getting the music mm. regardless of their brokenness as a nation. Mm. No, no, no. Yeah, I'm not saying the song. I'm saying short wave radio. I'm mm. saying the song reflects materiality. If Chaka Chaka sings that I'm in love with Mr. DJ and there were inside there, Chaka Chaka is saying there were many FM stations in the South catch Africa. Is a DJ. Which were, no, the catch is FM stations. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. The FM stations which were in South Africa and we didn't have. And they had learned it for a long time. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying with a poor management, because somebody could choose to say, if you put in many radio stations, people will be conscious. 
If you put in many radio stations, people will overthrow me. Or somebody would have done that and wouldn't be there anyway. So the advantage that we took in the technology of development cannot be taken for granted. Mm -hmm. We are in there. But, but yeah, FMs, yes. FMs mm -hmm. have really proliferated all over, even countries that are broken down, like yeah. Somalia. Is it there in yeah. North Korea? Yes. Well, no, North no. Korea is a different. Yeah. Yeah. Somalia. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Take for granted. It's Somalia. It's Somalia. Yeah. Yeah. Take for granted. Yeah. Uh, uh, take for uh, granted. Uh, we're trying to, to understand, yeah, and yes. uh, trying to take stock of uh, these 60 years. Yes. So we're trying to, you, you've talked about uh, the levels of how the countries like Indonesia have moved, uh, China, you know, from from just in a quick time, we are, and, the, and uh, the, we want to understand what are the challenges, what what has failed us to my, hit those mind, marks. Mindsets can also be challenges, mm -hmm. more so when the mindsets are uh, at the level of the leadership, mm -hmm. because I have always uh, wondered how General Museveni cannot recover or change his mindset in terms of uh, making comparisons of where we are, because mm -hmm. every time. A question is shot unto him about uh, progress. Always, mm -hmm. he makes comparisons of where we are with where we were. Mm -hmm. That's a question of mindset. Mm -hmm. we, we contend against, we contend with that. I've raised this issue a number of times. Mm -hmm. Our, I think we really need as people who want to develop this country and those who are mostly in the area of governance need to shift the way we look at uh, progress mm. for us to challenge ourselves and also to measure our progress in a better way mm. we would need to compare where we are at with, with where we ought to be mm. General Museveni, now, if you ask him, he'll tell you about kilometers of roads, he'll tell you where we were, where we are now, and the kilometers of roads in 86. Huh? He'll tell you about bags of coffee now and in 86. He'll make, give you all manner of, of, of statistics mm -hmm. of where we are at and where we were in 86. Even uh, per capita income, mm -hmm. even revenue collection. Now, if you would make those comparisons, certainly we have made advances. There's no doubt about that. But you see, the moment you shift... Because those are in a few sectors. He never talks about the hospitals, he never talks about where, the Well, even in the few sectors yes. where he gives statistics, mm -hmm. you would say yes. But you see, we contest that. The comparison should be with where we ought to be. Mm -hmm. Now, when you do that, you basically realize the weaknesses that you've had in management. Mm -hmm. In, for example, if, if, if we are, I normally look at, we are talking about the independence. Yes. 60 years. Of that, General Museveni has been leadership for 36. Mm -hmm. So when you compare, that's why we like comparing ourselves with countries that have made significant advances within the same period of time. If you look at our per capita income, if we just use that, mm -hmm. and uh, I think we're around uh, 1,000, uh, 1,000, thereabouts, about 1,000. Mm -hmm. And you find that uh, Singapore, which was around $300, as we were around the same, around $300 mm -hmm. in 62, thereabouts. And now they're at around 45,000 United States dollars, and we're at 1,000. Mm -hmm. Then you need to question yourself. Mm -hmm. South Korea also was the same. But look at term, in terms of technological advancements within the same period of time. Mm -hmm. I think they are in, 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 in on shipbuilding in uh, uh, consumer electronics, mm -hmm. in uh, telecoms. They are around 25, if not 28,000 United States dollars in terms of per capita. Mm -hmm. So we would be asking ourselves, how could other countries make such a leap? We're at the same level. Now they have made such significant advances. What have they done that we have not done? Mm -hmm. But if you compare 
ourselves with ourselves where we were. <laughs> Then you'll be satisfied and say we made significant <laughs> movements. <laughs> Paula has just talked about, for example, bridges. <laughs> In 60 years, we have three bridges which cross River Nile. Um, alone. River Nile alone. River Nile alone. <laughs> they all have cracks. And, and from, Ginger, <laughs> from Ginger to where Nile exits mm. should be about between 200, 300 kilometers, I suppose. I don't have the exact figure. Mm, about, 300. about 300 kilometers. Now, the, 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 by the time of independence, we had the one at Jinja, the old bridge, mm. and we had Karuma. Mm -hmm. Now, the new ones are Para. No, we had Pakwach, Karuma, yeah. and Jinja. Those were three. Mm. Now we have Isimba mm. and Para. Mm. Those are the ones which have been added. No, the one in Jinja and Kayonga and the other one. Okay, three. The, the new bridge in Jinja, mm. the one in Kayunga, and the one in Para. Those are three. Mm. All with forts. <laughs> <laughs> That's an well, at least the big ones kind of cross, so we can say, okay, they're bridges. <laughs> <laughs> now, I, so, so, I, 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 I read geography, but I had never known that Sur had a river which crosses it mm. until I went there, being on the Seur only once. And I found when you cr that river crosses Seoul City, and it, there's a stretch of about 50 kilometers crossing the city, 50 kilometers, they have 20 bridges. <laughs> 50 kilometers, 20 bridges. 300 kilometers, three new bridges, three old ones, six. <laughs> what do they have that we don't have? In terms of natural resources, they don't have more than what we have. We have more than what they have. Mm -hmm. What they have is discipline. Definitely. So, we, 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 yes, we can celebrate where we are and where we have reached, but we should find out why have other societies made significant advances by far? Like the example which Paula used. Mm -hmm. China, 13 years ever since at least the Communist Party took over. Because they count from that, from 1949, from that. Because before then, China used to exist, but under the Kuomintang. Mm. And China has also a, a long history of culture and development, technological development. So there, yes, they had a foundation on the basis of which they could make the leaps that uh, they have made in a span of 70 years, from literally being a third world country into being... Uh, literally a second, the second largest economy in the world, and they are threatening almost to become the first in a very short period of time if they maintain direction. So we should not be, you know, uh, complacent and easy on ourselves. Mm -hmm. We need to, to really hold ourselves to account, more so those who are in the uh, educated class, the elite. If, if, if we keep on measuring ourselves from where we used to be and where we are now and fall in the same trap Genome 7 has fallen into, we'll just feel that we're making progress. Mm -hmm. But we will not understand that either it's laziness or lack of focus or because of the quick fix mindsets that we have mm -hmm. in the elite class. We want quick fixes. We don't seem to understand that, as the Bible says, that whatever a man sows, so shall he reap. So most times, instead of sowing the seed and therefore reaping the plant that comes out of the seed we would have planted, many times we eat the seed. <laughs> it's a problem. Yeah. We need to look at it and mm. question ourselves mm. so that we can, we can, you know, we can yank ourselves out of what we fit. I don't know whether it's a sickness. I don't know what exactly it is. Mm. But we have to yank ourselves out of that. I'm not just blaming the, 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 the uh, leaderships in the 60s because the danger is that even any change which will happen and Change is a constant, mm. change will happen, mm. inevitably. A, any group which goes in there, whether it is within the movement, whether it is from outside in the opposition, if any group which goes in there does not understand the difference on the, 
on the question of the mindsets of leaders, you can easily remain in the vicious cycle. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Uh, uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Geno. Uh, Sarah, right there is where we want you to, to understand where probably uh, the challenges are and why are they that they, 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 they are there that cannot allow for a country that has been around for 60 years to enjoy the same limelight like the other countries that they literally were at the same time uh, in, a, in a just post uh, uh, independence time. You know, I know the, the example of China has been used, mm -hmm. but I can bring in for you another balancing act. Let's speak at Dubai, the United Arab Emirates. It's 50 years old. Yeah. So we are 10 years older than it. So let's remove that for us of the case of 13 mm. years ahead. The United Arab Emirates is 10 years younger than Uganda. They are a desert with only one resource, oil. Mm. When the new the leadership, the president who died last year, and the son now is in charge. When he came in, because he's the one who extracted the oil, he said he will extract the oil and make United Arab Emirates a first world country. He built, there's a whole street of the indigenous people. The indigenous people of United Arab Emirates are 15% of, of the population today because it's largely a population of immigrants from all over the world. Only 15% are indigenous. He built the whole street with mm -hmm. first class facilities for the indigenous population. And he gives them allowances for food, power and water on top of free housing. Mm -hmm. So then you have the rest of the population enjoying the immigrants, enjoying the rest of Anybody can go to United Arab Emirates and become a citizen, and it has attracted the whole world there. Mm. So when Maybe you look, someone would say that we we are not lucky to have some. No, 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 I'm coming. I I, I want something. to no, I want to clearly distinguish for you the difference mm. because we should stop hiding our hand, heads in the sun, and we should stop holding ourselves to lower standards as a country, especially mm. the elite, and being comfortable with nothing mm. while who do we king, the Raji the the rural population, that we are making progress. Mm. So when they extracted oil, and we have higher oil reserves <coughs> than them, they put those oil reserves to better use. First class infrastructure, with the now including the museum of the future, the road network, the, the airports, the gardens in the desert. Mm. The, you know, the capacities they've built using both green revolution technology, using modern technology, the, the, the number of industries that, that they have attracted all over the world on two issues. When they, so when they developed, after settling the indigenous people, they focused on infrastructure. And the infrastructure has attracted the world to the extent that now they've shifted to medical <coughs> tourism. And they have brought all the first, first class medical technology to Dubai, and people have been going for treatment in Europe. Indeed, we will yeah. find themselves going to United Arab Emirates for, for first class medical care. Leadership. They extracted their oil, built on their desert. It's just a desert surrounded with water. The best beaches in the world. So if you compare with all the resources in Dubai, we have them in Uganda. Mm. We have the oil. That we are struggling to, to should we then say that the, no, oil, no, I'm coming, have, uh, I'm the future coming. around the oil? <laughs> the oil was discovered way in 1956 in Uganda. Mm, mm. Yeah. So when you look at mm. the, the all the resources existing in Dubai, we have them here. We have much more because we have fertile soils, mm. which they don't have. We have fresh waters, which they don't have. We have a productive population which they never had. Mm. And we have other resources, including tourism and the rest. For them, they have reinvented their tourism. But for us, we have natural tourist assets in this country. Mm. And we can attract much more 
towards the revenue than them if we have the right leadership. Mm. The challenge of Uganda and the challenge of majority African countries is the leadership. And President Museveni rightly stated this. The problem of Africa is not its people. But the leaders, especially those who rule for too long. <laughs> Unfortunately, he has joined them. Exactly, it's the third longest ruler now in Africa. Mm. Very unfortunate. That is the problem of Africa. Mm. The problem of Uganda has been leaders who don't follow rules, leaders who have zero basics, leaders whose own advantage is the gun. Look what it means. What was the merit of Idamin? Mm. Had he not been in the army with access to guns? His only merit is being in the army with access to guns. Obote manipulated the constitution. Mm. Unfortunately, it set a wrong foundation for this country in terms of constitutionalism. When his problems overwhelmed him through with the Kabaka crisis and the rest, then I mean walked in with his gun. But first we are the British woman predated the first generations. So when you trace the problem to its foundation, so you have Ida Min with his gun, he goes, we have the Power Mwanga Commission organizing 1980 elections after the interference, the, the, the intervention of, of Tanzania, <coughs> to help us get rid of Ida Min. You have the Power Mwanga Commission and the contested election result. We have never recovered. Every election in this country is contested. Every a political process in this country has a gun element. So we have gun democracy in this country. Mm -hmm. And unless we confront this monster of gun democracy, we shall not make progress. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Uh, uh, sir, I would want to, to, to just ask right there that uh, we we have of course we are talking about countries that have had like uh dubai is oil yes I united also, Arab Emirates, uh, yes. Ba uh, mm. uh, bangladesh also has uh used yeah. the rice yeah on there but uh the problem could it be our forefathers that uh at the time of scrambling like you're saying cheating elections uh cheating their their way in there shouldn't we say that uh if they had put their mind together or probably what really, if we, we, are, we are faulting the, 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 the Britons or the British rule or the, Britain, the, the British to have corrupted, why couldn't we have had at a point where we say, okay, we have uh, the leadership that from 1962 that could have not wasted all that, the, the opportunities we had about that time? And uh, why is it that we had the people, you know, like you have those numerous changes, the, the, the quest for, for leadership that didn't serve the people. Why you see, do we have Dem all Dem Dem Dem, if your great, <laughs> if yes. your great grandfather beat up his wife, would you do the same? No. Like Frank Fanon said, I, I, I don't want to blame the problems of Uganda today. <coughs> we have had a problematic foundation as a country. Mm. But our problems are not all square because of a foundation. People who have come in after a faulty foundation have taken advantage of the cracks mm -hmm. in our faulty foundation as a nation and kept us at that faulty level. I found out which referred to the beautiful constitutional making process, mm -hmm. which I followed as a teenager in all level. You, you, you. You know, Ugandans thought it was a moment of never again. And if you speak to the likes of, and I'm sure General Moon, you know, the CA had that spirit of never again. Never again. And they thought we had crossed over. Mm. Ugandans thought <coughs> we had crossed over. And then the devil in President Museven emerged and he distorted the constitution. Actually, when you list achievements of President M7 today, if you may, you have to be a biggest joker mm. to add the constitution because he has destroyed it. It is like you know, dogs when they give birth, they eat their first child, mm. most of them. So, and if it's one uh, puppy, then it is gone. So, President M7 had birthed 
that 1995 constitutional uh, process. And, and, and in, in constitutional law, we say that uh, that constitution had three godfathers. President Museven, uh, as, uh, for political leadership, you had the Reto Apakaburo, for leadership, uh, steering the constitutional making process at, at the technical level, mm -hmm. and then Justice Odoche at the judicial level. Those are the three godfathers of, of the 1995 constitution. Mm -hmm. The Reto Apakaburo died while protesting at that time he was against the removal of term limits. Mm -hmm. So he, he, he kept his legacy. The, 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 the second godfather, Odochi, ate up his child. Capturated. Yes, by re yeah. refusing to vacate peacefully the judicial seat. Then, of course, President Museven, you, you can only refer that process <coughs> of mutilating the constitution distorting the basic structure for, for peaceful handover of power, like a puppy which gives birth, a dog which gives birth to one child and eats it. Mm. So I don't know whether you can even mention that as an achievement of President Museven. So that is the constitutional journey where we are. The preamble has no supportive text in the content mm. because the preamble is very clear. Mindful of our history, turbulent and chaotic history. The challenges we have faced as a people, we come together to give ourselves a durable and permanent national constitution. Mm. Thinking that it has solved the challenges of the past, but all the integral parts that we are addressing the challenges of the past are no more, oh. as we talk today. So what celebration is there? <laughs> it's just, uh, but we, uh, there, there, there are quite issues that I probably would love to, to respond, mm. uh, uh, Jeno and, uh, and Sarah. But in, interestingly is that uh, we, we just this uh, 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 at the address or at Kololo, the president say he was wondering asking questions of, don't we have professors of economics <laughs> in, in Africa? And he's asking this question after 36 years of his stay. And he's wondering, but he's the same person who is making several appointments, yeah, mm. that don't follow uh, the rules of the day, yeah, including the most recent of, of cows and livestock, you know. And you're asking questions of, do you have professors of economics? Why was he asking for them? Uganda at, six, at, at, in sister, his speech. At, at his speech. Why was he asking whether that they, 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 that they have failed to sort of solve the problem the economic, of the, <laughs> the economic challenge of Africa? And so I, I would want to ask, why is the problem? Because we have the resources as a country. We are not short of that. <coughs> okay. Uh, thank you. But first, let me give a follow-up on the comments made before, especially on this question of methods of comparison where we compare ourselves with ourselves. I find myself answering that question that way as well, but I think because of the packaging of the question. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be like uh, some students in other schools, not the school I went to, my school was okay, where a student had not done research, mm -hmm. and when the question comes, for, for possibly I don't uh, uh, revise the trans-Atlantic mm -hmm. trade, so when a question comes on Trans-Sahara, he says, if you had asked Transatlantic, then he goes ahead to give and give, give answers. <laughs> but the exam is asking Trans-Sahara. So now, when you ask me from independence Suppose to now, it was <laughs> okay, if you ask me from independence to now, my understanding is you want that gap of comparison. Mm. In other words, you are asking me if somebody died in 1963, mm -hmm. if he came back, what would he see that was not there? Mm -hmm. So maybe my discipline and adherence to the question, and many others, gives that answer. But if I now, you could possibly construct a question to say, we got independence in 1962. Mm -hmm. How do you think we should have developed by now? That's a different question. That's when I would answer you, in hypothesis mm. and i could answer you much far and wide 
In fact, you could answer you in some imaginative films and in America. Mm. You know, the Americans can make films to tell you that <laughs> in a thousand years we'll be on the moon and all mm. this. So it becomes now difficult. So it is a question of answering and they work questions. Towards that and there would be unlimited if you put me to hypothesize. I would, of course, start with comparing those who were with, like Singapore and South Korea and the rest. Mm. And I would even put you dreams and imaginations of where we would be. But your question was, 62 to now, mm. somebody who was independent since 63 went to planet Mars. If it came back, what would he see? So I don't want to answer a question. You have asked me transatlantic, and I'm ans answering trans -Sahara. So that is why you get this answer of a comparison of 1962 with ourselves. That is the genesis of that answer. It is a question of answering, being strict and disciplined to your question. Mm. <laughs> okay. Now, the, the, uh, the, uh, I think <laughs> the, the, the what prompted uh, mm. a different response was because of his reference to what M7 said. No, China. what M7 uh, said. Yes. Mm. Mm. One is asking uh, General the question. M7 also happens to be the president. Mm makes comparisons of where we are at now mm. with where we used to be. And for him, he starts at 86. <clears throat> and, and considering the critical nature of leaders, one has to look at the impact of the mindset of a leader. Mm. And basically, that's why we're making references to yes. where we ought to be. Now, I, I brought in China because mm. I had entered by saying I want to start with a disclaimer that we have not done so well. But then I came back to the question. And remember, I started by saying all is well that ends well. So I want to start with the, the badness. Mm. So that's how I imported the badness. But now the question now you have for me is what went wrong that we have not moved the way we should have been? Mm. One thing is that we are superimposed into a global economic system. I can assure you, even Afanimut knows very well the ideas we had in 86, to the extent that we are almost called a socialist movement. In fact, we are so careful of being called a Marxist organization. Mm. Meaning, therefore, the ideals, the aspirations, the wishes there were different. But shortly, what did we see? IMF saying this, World Bank saying this, do this, sell all this, give hospitals private, don't, in, don't put social infrastructure in health, let everybody pay for their health, let everybody say, come on, where are we coming from? So one big problem that we don't see is that we are operating in the middle of a global capitalist system, which will hold you. And I can assure you, even if Noob came to power, even if Ant came to power, you are imposed into this economic system. So it's a big, big halting that you are limited within circles. Whichever dreams you come from, in 86 we had dreams to the extent that, you know, when you talk of a socialist Marxist, you're talking of pro people, the people kind of arrangement, the, so, the social aspect, social guarantees, social safety nets. But we are in, here we are in a global economic system saying, what nonsense are you talking about? And you are disarmed. And I can assure you, whoever will come to government tomorrow will find himself into a fix of a global economic system. The other aspect is, uh, still in the global economic system, is that because they hold the economic system, you can even see in negotiating oil, if you lift the veil and, and package the contract therein, you really see the disadvantages, the weak negotiating capacity. Here we are saying we have the oil, you unpack it, lift the veil and see. So that is a part of it. So you then I'll come to some time and say, but what are we doing? The oil is not achieving that much. We are in this. Let's treat it by coffee, that he said. Mm. In, in 1962, if you bought Land Rover, the number of bags of coffee that would buy the same Land Rover, as if you had 50 bags of coffee to buy the same Land Rover, now you need 500 bags of coffee. Meaning that the world economic system have continued to rain on us again and again, regardless of the revolutionary spirit that you come with. And of course, I said the list is long, corruption. I agree with those who said we are in discipline, and I've been one of those who are agitating for discipline. 
the little resources that we have, is swallowed up. People are indisciplined. We call it corruption. And it may not only be in material, but may even be in spiritual aspects of favoring a brother, favoring this and that. We really need to come out of it. You, there are some places here, if you get an apartment, if, for example, there was a, a camera, for example, mm. some high-tech camera which would measure <clears throat> the bricks and the items used in that construction, that the, the one bought by corrupted money would be red, and the one bought on genuine money would be green. There are some apartments which would read all red. Oh, Kampara would read the whole red. of it. Very few. <laughs> so now, that, and imagine if all these resources were put in developing the national infrastructure. Mm. The whole of Tinder, the whole of where, the whole of Kisasi. You just have that camera and said, okay, this is a high-tech camera. Mm. which can look into this apartment and see uh, whether Peter really, let us see how many bricks and tiles that Peter bought with his genuine money. The one which are genuine will turn green, and the one which are stolen will be red. The entire part. I'm not sure whether that of Sarah would be green. So we need so total it discipline. It would be total <laughs> discipline. So we need, so I agree with those who said this. So mainly, without exhausting the list, the, why we are here as a country and other countries, the global economic fix, the, the, the corruption that is, among others, is why we are here. Come with your beautiful ideas. People like the mood had beautiful ideas in 86 and they were in charge. But you kind of slowly said, the power say, hey, come on, hold on a bit. Where are you going? Who are you? Go to Washington. Here we are. So it's really on the economic aspect. Oh, uh, you can't do much for now. We need to rethink, and not only as Uganda, mm -hmm. but as a unit of affected parties globally. Um, <clears throat> yes. As we get on to the break, you we're... can't have meaningful political independence mm -hmm. until you achieve meaningful economic progress or a firm economic base. Mm -hmm. Just can't. Mm. And because I'm... if you don't have a firm economic base, you'll be manipulated in political terms. Mm -hmm. However, when you find you are still operating from a position of political weakness, more reasons, more reason why you would need to be more disciplined, more reason why you would need to build cohesion mm -hmm. at your rear. Because when you are lead, a leader and you are in government, the population is your rear. It is suicidal to create a front when you are being fought on that front, maybe if there are disagreements in political terms, when your rear is in disarray, you cannot withstand and achieve victory. You'll be crushed. Mm -hmm. So any moment you want to put up a front, you must first build a formidable rear. And that's why you must build a cadership that is cohesive, and around common objectives and focus them, project where you intend to go and all of you must move in tandem. But if you do things which are going to disorganize your own rear, you cause your own team to be in disarray, what do you expect? You will not win any battle. Mm -hmm. You won't. Interesting. Two, another observation I'd like to make. Mm -hmm. We need to make a choice <laughs> on this continent. If we want to be democratic, let's be democratic. And put all our hearts and minds and souls in building a democratic culture. But if we want to be authoritarian, and then we become authoritarian, but we must advance the countries. China, that we, are not, we just talked about, has never been a democracy in the sense of multi-party system of governance like we are trying to establish here. Mm -hmm. South Korea 
in the time when it was building the, a strong economic base was never a democracy. Actually, it was a military dictatorship. Singapore, the one we uh, refer to a lot, was never a democracy. They, they used to call it a benevolent dictatorship under Lee Kuan Yew. Mm -hmm. Even Malaysia that has been in its footsteps was never a democracy as such. They were authoritarian in a sense, but they focused on the resources of their countries, the opportunities that they had. Dubai <laughs> is yes. not a democracy. No, mm. not at all. But they had leaders who cared to advance their countries, regardless of not being democratic, mm. and said we must advance our economies. We must build the foundations on the basis of which there can be progress, exploiting their natural resources, and also taking opportunity of the global environment in which they found themselves. A country like Dubai, they yeah. just looked at themselves, they looked at the advantage they had, and the advantage was geography. Because yeah. initially, it was a transshipment area for things that were coming from, it became a free port. A docking area. Yeah. <clears throat> Goods coming from China into Africa mostly, and in the Middle East. And then went ahead to look again at, at advantage that they could build, and became a tourist uh, center. Mm -hmm. And now, they, as, as, as Sarah was saying, they're advancing into other areas like, uh, again, uh, health, Medical, yeah. and also yeah. as, yeah. as a financial hub. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They just looked at where they had an opportunity. We have opportunities. In the 60s, we were never democracies. We became one party states, we became military dictatorships. So we have not advanced neither when we are dictatorships nor when we are trying to become democratic. So there is a deeper problem. Mm -hmm. There's a deeper problem, and that's what you need to focus on. It's interesting. Because not to care about the country has nothing to do with democracy or not having democracy. Mm -hmm. If you care about people and their lives, you can contend about the system of advancement in terms of economic uh, development, in terms of service delivery, in terms of uh, uh, economic uh, technological developments. You can contend. If we are contending about the nature of governance, but we are advancing in all other areas, then it will be understandable. Mm -hmm. But we have been as careless and as short-sighted under dictatorships as we are now when we are quasi-democracies. So we must make up our minds. What do we want? Absolutely. Sorry, you had this, some, something to add on General's <coughs> comment. No, I, I think General is spot on yes. and he summarizes the first session mm. better. Mm. Because the system of governance would not matter. Like he rightly says, Dubai is a monarch. So it is not about the system of governance. It is about the people with the tools occupying this, this or controlling the state machinery how do you advance the state machinery how do you make decisions for the well-being of and advancement of the population how do you utilize a country's resources for development that is our problem and, and it's good uh, which you com uh, at least agreed Admits, about uh, yes. NRM squandering the economy through corruption. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah admitted no, no, to no. that. Let's have a short break. We are going to return to that. Let's have a short misrepresentation. <laughs> let's have a short break. And uh, while we return, of course, we'll need to focus more on uh, what we need to do practically and, of course, deeply, what we need to do and we'll for the focus next for the years. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, by the class, everything is red. We need to discuss what we need to do for the next 40 years as a country uh, going forward into the century. Uh, let's have a short break. But uh, this conversation, of course, is on, online on our uh, YouTube channel, Civic Space TV. We're on uh, Facebook Live, TikTok. You will see our, our short clips there. And of course, uh, Twitter, the hashtag is uh, chat show UG and Civic Space TV UG uh, hashtags. Be part of the conversations and uh, let's come back. The Citizens Chat Room happens every Friday at 2 p.m. on Civic Space TV online on Facebook and YouTube. We invite you to be part of this conversation. Civic Space TV. Uh, welcome back from that short break and uh, thank you very much for being ident followers of uh, this conversation that uh, is uh, trying to 
stress our six years of independence and uh, importantly what we need to do as a country as a people uh, into the next century to, to better and to see Uganda uh, uh, at where it's supposed to be where we feel it should be and uh, of course joined on the panel uh, is uh, uh, General Munto, uh, Sara Birete and uh, a retired major uh, a witch polar who are helping us uh, really understand and put uh, context onto the conversation today. Uh, I need to get to the panel. Uh, uh, Afande, you had something to... to yeah, I to, wanted to, to just make... To make clarity or yes, to... Yes, make clarity because... Uh, because you are clear Dr. the point where we Dr. Were. Sarah <laughs> seems to say, <laughs> seems either to say <laughs> that corruption is seem to say or seem to think I say mm. that corruption as illustrated in the use of camera that mm. is only practiced by NRM. I am saying by but, but, the, but the president is on record defending saying let my corrupt people st you know stay and you know they invest in you the are going to chase the money <laughs> you, you're going to chase the money out of that, the country that one can look it at a <laughs> but also <laughs> uh, maybe to, as before he makes his yeah. point to to inform him that the igg is on record for having said that uganda loses 20 trillion every year that is half of our national budget now i just wanted to say but that first we have to agree on the definition <laughs> or what i have in mind yes I want a wider definition to mean a person you taking or using resources that ordinary is not his. If you stick to the legislative de definition, <coughs> then you are going to do it within the government mm. budgetary constraints. But I'm saying as a country, we are talking of every Ugandan that takes resources that ordinary doesn't belong to him. In this case, you are including the church the mosque, pastors, and everybody People who bring to the church. resources. People bring to yeah. the church, will, willfully. Yes, but there's ways should be used. Mm -hmm. Now, so I'm saying, because if you exclude other people and stick to the government, then you're going to have a sectarian approach to values. So the other party, the other group of people will say, okay, for us we can continue to do the wrong, including converting my neighbor's land. After all, the focus is on but that see, government. But government is so to blame I want so much. A wider like uh, Afando was yeah. saying on the issue of mindset, mm. you know, where, where are we? If we have uh, the issue of, uh, uh, say, uh, the value system of the country, who has to shape that? It's the government. Yes. So where I'm we say saying, there is a concerted effort. Yes, if we say, yes, the government has to if we set blow it, on corruption, the government has, has to be set the value system call. and set for all. Not set for civil servants, yeah. but set for all. So we said for all. So uh, I don't. I, I want to correct the, the, the impression from Sarah that it is on and it is all of us are guilty. We, so mm. everybody should reevaluate and look at himself to say, look, something is wrong. So that's why I brought in the mis the, the misuse of resources, the discipline of resources. Mm. Possibly, if somebody came up, a, 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 a bishop who died in 1963, mm. if a, a, a church had used resources better. This bishop who died in 1963 was come up, or who went to planet Jupiter and came back. He should have expected a better church, say, in Lira, with more development in Lira, with better things in Lira diocese. But this bishop would come up and say, is this the diocese I left? And that is about in discipline resources. So not only in government, not only in NRM. If anything, NRM has put measures in place. The laws, the institution of IGG, CM, I mean, uh, uh, in, uh, DPP, CID. A lot of things are in place to show the political commitment. But that has not yet cured the mischief. Mm -hmm. So I want to put that clear. But also I've forgotten something about the conflicts that we have had, the wars there too. This, to a measurable degree, has contributed to where we are as opposed to what we should have been. So I mentioned the global economic system. I want to add wars. We have had repeated wars. I have had corruption. So I mainly had three issues that has kept us what we are. But the list is long. Mm -hmm. I also want to say, I, did, I, I, I didn't want to raise the issue of 
immateriality of the political system. Because if I did it, it would look like being from the ruling party, I'm saying leave us alone, we can be in power as long as we want in the system. But I'm glad that it came from my two colleagues to say it's immaterial, the political governance system that is, it is should be. So even if NRM was in power, he's saying it's immaterial, but we're going far and over about what, what they say. Mm. So, but if it had come from me, it would have been like I am actually advancing and perpetuating a system. Mm. But I let it go, and that's why I zeroed myself into three aspects the global economic aspect, the corruption, and the wars that we have had. Mm. Which, okay. Mm. Now, see, the, the, the issue of political system <clears throat> is something that uh, anybody who cares can do research about. Mm. And it is factual that we have had uh, governments which have been democratic. And when they have leaders who are focused, who are disciplined, they have advanced their countries. The unfortunate thing in Africa is that we haven't had that many. The only one we can look at right from inception was Botswana. Mm. But we also would find examples of quite a number of countries that were never democratic, but that have advanced their own countries. So when you look at the two, and then you look at ourselves who have been dictatorial and also at some point become quasi-democracies that we have not advanced our countries in whichever system we would be in. Mm -hmm. So there must be a, a larger problem. And that's what we need to look at. Yeah. It's a deeper problem. We need to confront that's it and ask ourselves, what exactly is the problem? And, and, and that, <laughs> that's, that really ushers us into the, our segment, our second segment of the conversation, where we are asking, where do we go from here? The 40 years, what needs to be done? And I would want to start with you, General. In the next 40 years, what we need to we've, we've looked at, it. of course, we try to, to highlight a few uh, successes that have been there over 60 years. We we'll look at the challenges that, uh, that uh, we think have limited us from probably moving far. But now we need to understand in those challenges, the next 40 years, what should be the focus? Where I, do we I need think to? We really yeah. need to build a consensus in this country that there is a larger problem beyond the issue of governance. And we need to, if we build a consensus and get to know what that problem is, then start looking for solutions for that problem. Because for you to uh, effectively cure a disease, you must do the correct diagnosis. If you misdiagnose, you are going to apply wrong treatment. Mm. So where exactly is the problem, therefore? at least from my own perspective, is that we seem to be people who don't care about the whole. <laughs> we care about the part. Each one of us as individuals advance himself or herself. Mm -hmm. Not recognizing that the stability and advancement of the whole contributes to the advancement of the part. That there is no way the part will advance on its own without the advancement of the whole. If we can reach that conclusion, then maybe that would be a good beginning point. Mm -hmm. And that therefore goes back to the nature of the people in governance. What's their character? Mm -hmm. Are they people who are interested in advancing society first and foremost, knowing that the moment society is advancing, as of necessity, they will also advance as individuals because there will be systems that will enable them or an enabling environment will have been created by themselves in building that system. Mm -hmm. Or is it each one for himself and God for us all? <laughs> because that seems to be the, the, the running uh, philosophy throughout. Mm -hmm. Anybody who gets into a position believes that if I don't utilize this position to my advantage, I will be a fool. Mm. And then when things go wrong, we look for scapegoats. We blame each other. We go kind of in a frenzy attacking one another. But we don't seem to understand that the problem is 
those who are in the political class. Mm. We want quick fixes, we want shortcuts. We don't understand that there must be sacrifices for us to build a firm foundation on the base of which the whole can prosper. The whole meaning the whole of society. Mm. And therein we build institutions, we build systems of governance that create fairness, transparency, justice. And then the individuals prosper within that whole that has been System. established and built that way. Short of that, which other way can it be other than, uh, you know, having a jungle law? Because even in jungles, animals are there. Mm. If you go to the national parks that we have, Kidepo, they are there. There are lions, there are zebras, there are giraffes, there are all kinds of animals. The powerful eat the weak. Mm. <laughs> if that law of the jungle is the one that keeps being applied, that's the culture we have mm. for 60 years. So the question is, do we want to terminate it? Or do we want to keep, you know, advancing it, different faces, but same direction? Mm -hmm. And the ones who are powerful will survive. And, and when, when that culture is prevailing, it manifests in many different ways. Mm -hmm. where, where, where could be the starting point? Could it be... <laughs> could it be... Individuals who are in, in, in politics. Mm -hmm. Now, the, the most frightening thing is that politics being the area where it is easy to make money, all nature of people are there, yeah. struggling for space. <laughs> the other frightening thing is that the people who tend to be honest, who men and women of integrity, tend to stay out of politics. They don't want to get caught up in the fray. Mm. And one thing that has not down on them yet is that nature hates vacuums. And, 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 and that space must be occupied, the space of governance. So when the, the people who want to do what is right stay out, then the ones who go in are the ones who operate by jungle laws. Survive of the fittest. Mm -hmm. And then those who on the sidelines are frustrated. They are angry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you ask yourself, why are you angry? Mm -hmm. What is happening is a result of you staying out on the sidelines. That's nature. Mm -hmm. That's how nature operates. To displace the nature of people who are now the majority in politics, mm. the ones who want to do what is right must get in and build a critical number to a point where they can change the direction of things. It's a question of balance, which is the dominant force. Yes. Every situation in any society, whatever situation that is, is simply a reflection of what the dominant force is. Absolutely. Yes. Mm. This is not rocket science. Thank you, Afande. <laughs> and, uh, sir, or, or you, no, or you would want us to the... conclude from there. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> building on the uh, common narrative. And by the way, this mm. has nothing to do with, with parties. This has nothing to do with uh, many other factors. Mm. It is a question of the concentration of people who want to do right. Mm. Because if they existed in one party, like if they were in the ruling party, the direction of things would be completely different. Yeah. If they existed in any of the opposition parties and that opposition party took power, it would change the direction of politics in the country. But we've not had that ever mm -hmm. since 62. Mm -hmm. Does that mean we've not had honest men and women in, in, in parties or in governments? We've had them there. But, but at no they... point have they ever been the dominant yeah, force. Course. Always they're in a minority, always operating on the periphery, always marginalized and eventually dispersed. Mm -hmm. And the dynamics are not going to change even as you go into the future. So those who are working for a better future have to understand that dynamic clearly. If they don't, they will continue frustrated, crying their hearts out. Nothing is going to happen. Mm -hmm. yeah. Interesting. So you, you had the... uh, and Enarim has exceeded in those two. Money, violence. It has gone beyond even the, the usual you known carrot and stick because it is in extremes. Extreme monies, you find people spending three billion to campaign in a small constituency to become an MP. Why would you spend such money in politics? Mm -hmm. If it wasn't for impunity, if you are not eyeing opportunities to go and steal, 
replace your man and enrich yourself. So why would you not put up a hotel with three billion? So you have excessive use of money and excessive use of violence. Mm. Mainly the binary. The, the, the second narrative in our public space is the, the, the theory of small masses. This one has approached me. They mortgaged the way around. Please see what to do. Those are common letters by a fountain of one. This one I have appointed with the person of order. And then when you go to trace where these people, you find they are all from one place to not one district. The, so then, so now everybody who has a problem, mm. if you can access the president, then it is like it accessing a, a messiah. What difference does it make? Too you have even spoiled it. Spoiled it because I had to make it. from another district. You have made the illustration worse. No, so, it's another district. It's another district. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you, if you have a problem and you can access the president, mm. it's like you've seen heaven on earth. Mm. So the fountain of honor is a clearing agent. Please, for I minister, sit with the finance, help this one. You have a country that is facing two aspects of global economic shocks. One created by COVID, and as we are trying to recover from COVID, you have the Ukraine war. Everybody is affected. But you choose your relatives, you choose your friends, and you think they should access free taxpayers' money. Even appointments. 80% of state appointments rotate around the theory of small masses through patronage and sectarianism in this country today. You can see the crisis in Uganda Airlines. Mm. You can, every institution is undergoing a crisis <laughs> because the tribalism and sectarianism has repressed merit. If you go to the third aspect facing our politics is now the manipulation. I, I don't know how to, do, to define it. Even in opposition, you have capacity to manipulate, box people here and there. You can succeed. It is not limited to when I am. And that is the, 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 the finals, why now the good people, unfortunately, because that does not help us solve the crisis as a country. It expands the crisis. So if you are not rough, if, first of all, going through a campaign, you, you need like to hire. <laughs> like 20 soldiers, whether private or whatever, around you. How do you campaign? Who will attack you? I used to see even in Western Uganda, the Honorable Kutana was attacked. The Honorable, you know, the, this one, the, the, now the current Vice Chancellor Chambo, when he attempted to, to run, then attacked. So you have this mafia in our politics. If you have capacity to create chaos and you have some little money to your organs, you will succeed. Mm -hmm. That is how the Boda Boda 2010 had imagined. That is how you have these all these squads even increasing criminality in the country and breakdown of rule of law and, and law and order. Then to, to, to conclude that, another narrative now you have is the elite becoming, and I'm sorry really, because it is painful, mm -hmm. becoming like crowns. Because if you look at the current recent narratives, you, you have somebody who is a general in them. You have been promoted. When the general Muntos would be promoted, you would be like a civil ceremony in the media. So you have somebody hiring oh, convoys, hiring <laughs> crowns, dancers, <laughs> skate on the road, that because they are going to be, to, to get the peeps in the army. So he moved with supporters, an army man with supporters, supporters to do what? The job of an army man is to protect. 
Ugandans with their property and the territory in terms of the country. So now you have supporters to do what? As an army man. And I'm glad I'm seated on the panel with the professional army man, although retired. So an army man needs supporters for what? So you have the vulgarization, complete vulgarization of institutions. And unfortunately, the last man standing in Uganda used to be the army. But you have this top vulgarization of the army today. And the army is a laughing stock in the country. So that is to me. The, the, the four lenses through which I see the actors in public space. Mm. This is a country that we think has attained maturity <coughs> at 60 years of independence. We are a laughing stock. I know that during that backlash with the Kenyans, they called us a meme country. But uh, well, let's take the meme definition. <laughs> Don't they have a point? If you can have a name man moving with the crowns that he has supporters serving, and we are name account. <laughs> so, so however, then how do we move mm. from this vulgarization of the state? Meme as in M E M E. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> like an emoji. The names, eh? Yeah, the an emoji the, count. Yeah. 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 So, <laughs> how do we move away from the vulgarization? No, it is repetitive. <laughs> <laughs> How do we move away from this vulgarization? Maybe, and, uh, maybe it's a generational problem. <laughs> and of course, <laughs> Jen was saying that maybe at that time there was no enough, a uh, lot of media no, to capture they could the not. They could not do such <laughs> things. Even if there was media. No, yeah. could not. There was discipline. There, is, yeah. there was discipline. Mm. The, the, the UPDF the was known yeah. for discipline and professionalism. Mm. Not anymore. Not anymore, unfortunately. Interesting. Uh, I would want you to... to, to, to yeah, I, I want to answer... The next 40 forward. years, but also... Way, way way make your, yes. Uh, we have the opportunity to move forward. We are still a country, we are still a nation. We have diversity in our commun communities and cultures, which you should earn us to our advantage mm -hmm. than if you are one communality. Because... We can take advantage of our differences because we have different values and different capacities and views. So we are still a country, so we stand a lot of chance. Now, uh, with the current president in place, because there has been this point of view that regardless of the political system, we should be thinking for the public good, for the good as opposed to the individuals. And we have seen leaders who have done it like Gaddafi did it, and others did it. Uh, of course, the, the, the city-state like uh, Singapore, they did it. Now, I have no doubt in my mind that President Museveni is as good as those, or even better. Mm -hmm. uh, it can be seen from his history, uh, from building the institutions of the army, and even his public utterances or statements, you can study from that. But now, good as he is, it brings me now to, 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 to now that I had listed what has kept us back, mm -hmm. I can just re echo that we address those. For example, wars. We can, by certainty, quantify how much money we lost in wars in totality, but even in specific war. It is easy to calculate each bullet cost how much, how much bomb or each bomb cost how much, how about the fuel used, how about the vehicles, all these things and the salary. So we can cost how much money we have used in subsequent wars and you know how much we lost. Now that we don't have the wars, we can do better. So we should stop the war now that we don't have and use resources that would ordinarily be wasted in war for the betterment for the 40 years. The other thing is discipline, as we said, corruption. If we stopped corruption, the leakages in resources that Sarah quotes be a half of the national budget would do much more. There is a school of thought which says that possibly as a government, we have not demonstrated the political will to punish, to deter. There's a school of thought which thinks that as a government, we have handled them with kid gloves, and that is why it is perpetuated. 
We need to investigate that school of thought, right or wrong. So we need to stop leakages of resources. And the last one, as I said, is we need to sit as developing countries to rethink our relationship with the developed world. Mm. If the relationship remains as it is, with the debts and the whatever it is, with the unbalanced economic relationship that I gave that the amount of coffee bags that would buy Land Rover in the 60s is now five times the same. That economic relationship will keep us in bondage forever. And it's going to be difficult if we do it as Uganda. And that's why we need East African unity. We need Africa. We need the all the entire developing countries, mainly led by Brazil and India mm. and South Africa. They are the leaders in this discussion. So if we do this, I am sure that in the next 40 years, if somebody came back who was here now today, would be a far, far country. So the ball is in our court. We have all the chances. But avenues and resources are there. Resources not in terms of material resources, but material in terms of avenues that we can have, aspirations that we can have. So it's not that bleak. The future. There are things that we can do and do it, if we do it rightly, that can move us to whoever will come back in 40 years. I'm sure you will be there in 40 years' time. It runs quickly. You can't imagine 1986, we would be here in 40 years. Just recently, 1986, we were capturing 40 years. It's a short duration. So if we do this right, we would possibly, the 40 years, we stand the chance of being a Uganda like the one in hypothesis in American videos and feelings where you move with all the technology. So, I have said, I had listed earlier what has kept us, reverse those and the person who will be in charge at that time. Because if you, uh, uh, Afanemutu likes putting the people in power. I, my, my discomfort with that is that when the people are many, it becomes difficult to appoint blame or even to, 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 to help all of them accountable. And that's why I zero on the person of the president for this time. Because if he means well and acts on those who don't mean well, which I'm sure he means well, if we act on those, because even if he means well, the others will derail it. Why does he act? He has well? been acting, but that's why I'm, I started by saying there is that school of thought which says that. And I did not want to share or concur with the school of thought, but I said it should be investigated. Mm. Are they right? Are they not right? That we need a firmer action on that. So that uh, even if he means well, his meaning well is not watered down by the people in the system. Mm. So we really bank on him to show that I mean well, I mean well for Uganda, like Gaddafi meant well for Uganda. I mean well like the leader of Singapore who, who meant well. I don't mean for myself. I mean for Uganda. And whoever tries to spoil this strategic move should be set aside mm. so that we move. So all that, that... Yes, as we are getting into the closing, we, I would want us to just highlight at least five issues, key issues probably for our viewers, but also for, for, for the people in the policy uh, and governance world, that those that they could really work on to ensure that at least in the years we are talking about, there could be considerable change, tangible uh, uh, change. Wow. You want me to give five? Suppose I don't have them. Anyway, <laughs> we know that. Uh... <laughs> anyway, it, 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 this is now a, a programmatic area. Mm. It's more operational. Mm. But I've given already the broad yes. aspects of stop that and move forward. But you would like to say, and by the way, many mm. of them are contained in our national development plan. We have a national development plan, well articulated, mm. and that everything is contained in there. So in that yeah. NDP. Yeah. Uh, mm. Probably they keep increasing NDP3 now, but by then we'll have a, but but there's, there's a, a national grand one. Plan. There's a vision 2040. Yes, vision, vision 2040. Yeah. Yes. So in that, which a few five or three or so. One thing, one of them is uh, in the, I mean, uh, 
uh, the resource exploitation area. You, you're talking about petroleum, you're talking to other gold and all this, these other things. Please emphasize that these resources are made for the best use of the people. The other thing is work on the infrastructural nature. The current situation is barbaric. I mean, you can't have a city where even within the city, the roads are not there, and the nationwide. Mm. The, the third aspect is the governance itself in terms of resource management. Mm. We need to work on it to stop that. And the, 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 the other area is the of area of peace. Mm. Maintain the peace that you have. And uh, the other area is now to maintain the macroeconomic system. Because if we don't, it slips out. But all in all, uh, if I had to look at the, this is my summarized version, but it's contained in Vision 2020, and it's also into the breaking other pieces of the National Development mm. Plan. And they're beautiful. In fact, there's a saying that we make beautiful plans <clears> here, <throat> and it is implemented in other countries. So the issue is actually not what is what to be done. We know what to be done. Leadership. Yeah. We know what to be done, but how we do it or when <laughs> we're doing it is the issue. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Sarah says leadership, but I, I, I wonder what is her definition for leadership. Okay. But me, I have said mm. President Museveni means well, <laughs> like Gaddafi meant well. It is only now the <laughs> cadres around that needs to be acted on in view of the other school of thought mm. that I said should be investigated. Mm. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you. <laughs> Find it. Uh, Sarah? As a part, uh, before I go to my conclusion, I want to demystify that common narrative, mm. which I find uh, really, and it's common with NIM Kadas, mm. that President Museven means well, he's a good leader, but the people around him. Mm. Birds of the same feather, we always flock together. I do not think that a good person can keep permanent company with an evil person. I do not think. Mm. So the, 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 that uh, defense, to, to, to make things, the apportion of blame, and take the blame away to where it belongs. In every country, the back rests with the president. Mm -hmm. And you cannot say the man is good, but he keeps bad company. That is the biggest fallacy you can ever hold doing with the people. My key five things moving forward, preparing Uganda really for takeoff, mm -hmm. as, as we build towards the century celebrations. One, we need political transition national consensus, and we need to sort out matters of governance, rule of law. That is my point number one. I'm sure the, the, the argument before has really demonstrated how that is problematic. And it's our biggest problem, why we have failed to reach takeoff stage, where we should be at 60 years of majority, but we are not. The second point for me is to build independent institutions. And, and I'm glad the Mr. Montegeno is here. He preaches a very, very good message on the importance of building institutions. Mm. A nation can never develop without strong institutions. Instead, we have perpetrated the big man syndrome that has kept Africa <laughs> in enclave economies since independence. We need to destroy that and build the strong institutions instead of strong leaders. My, my third point is about, of course, what we have talked about, elimination of corruption, fiscal indiscipline, and promote transparency in leadership and governance, mm. and management of resources. And once you have built institutions, then you have a foundation for rule of law and, and elimination of of corruption, impunity, and transparency, and have the common principle of all men are equal before the law, which doesn't apply in this country today. Mm. My, my fourth point would be on fixing the economy now. Because once you deal with the three, then of course the economy will move. Ugandans are very hardworking people, but they have had an unfortunate permanent <laughs> presence of bad leadership that does not enable it to exploit its potential, as well as the potential of the country. And the third point then would be on focusing on the social protection of the people through proper access to quality health care and education. Mm -hmm. To me, if we can do these five things, Uganda will be ready for takeoff and, and we'll catch up with the other countries that have left us 
60, for 60 years we have been a mess. Thank you very much, uh, uh, sir. Uh, do you know? Yeah. First, uh, let me also make uh, some comments on the issue of General Museveni and uh, whatever good intentions he may have had or he may still have. You see, translating good intentions into good outcomes is also dependent on the manner of management. Being a micromanager, which he cannot recover from anymore, mm -hmm. he completely missed the fundamental issue of building strong institutions and functioning systems. And in his mind, being a micromanager, does things in a way as if he could replace institutions. You can't. Even when you are charismatic, even if you are well-meaning, if you fight a Lone Ranger battle as an individual, even if you build something, but in the process you undermine institutions, you compromise the systems, whatever you've built, the moment you exit, it will come crashing down. Now, besides being a micromanager, he also was not honest enough to know that as an individual, you can't be the alpha and the omega, or the beginning and the end, that you remain existing, and therefore everything must be dependent on you. It just doesn't happen. So he, over time, systematically and in a crafty way, and he has been successful in regard to that, mm -hmm started building power around himself through the misuse of the national security apparatus, through the use of money to compromise people. When you are a good leader, you do analysis of the people you are working with. Everybody has a strength and a weakness. So you concentrate in strengthening them where they are weak so that they can become stronger. He does the reverse. Where people are weak, he expresses their weakness to compromise them to become part of his power base. So either there is no challenge, or even if there was to be a challenge, mm. any counter forces to him are totally thrown into disarray. And as of necessity, corruption has had to grow. Because if you choose to take that path, then you must keep on using money and fear to contain any group that is organizing against you, whether within, whether outside. And that's why we're in the crisis in which we are at now. Mm. The crisis we are in is an outcome of his methods. So let me put that on the side. Where forward? Any team of people that want to advance this country must start by fixing the vehicles of governance. And to me, unless the constitution is changed, mm -hmm. the vehicles of governance are parties. If we change it tomorrow and say an NGO or a church or a mosque or uh, CSO can run a country, then we could concentrate on whichever would go in the constitution replacing political parties. Mm. But as long as they remain political parties, if we don't fix the political parties, you cannot fix governance. Because <laughs> any political party that goes into power we we can only give what it has. Mm. You cannot short circuit that. And governance <clears throat> being at the core of the problems we've had in the last 60 years. If you want anything to happen, even when you have the best programs, even if you have the best manifestos, the biggest challenge has been on implementation. Implementation can only come from having a critical number in the governance vehicles of people who have the capability and the discipline to implement what they would have planned. Mm -hmm. I find that in there. We are not paying a lot of attention to mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we keep on flowing along and we hope mm -hmm. things will happen somehow. I, I find that just uh, briefly, ca can you just hint on uh, what probably should be fixed? How do we then fix the, the nature, properties? The nature mm. 
And one, of course, the parties themselves must build. They must build within themselves the value systems, the principles that they stand for. Mm -hmm. And attract people who believe in the value systems, in the principles that they stand for. And, and all, basically all parties uh, speak about uh, good governance principles. Mm. I've not heard of any party which says uh, we will go in there and become corrupt. <laughs> they all talk about transparency. Mm. <laughs> they all talk about fairness. I've not heard any party which promotes nepotism. I've not heard of uh, any party which promotes injustice. No. So in, in as far as the written word is concerned, the manifestos, the constitutions, I think all of them are on the right path. The mm. question is, recruiting a significant number of men and women who will walk the talk. And a party which succeeds in building that so that the balance of forces is in favor of men and women mm -hmm. who will go by what they say they stand for, this country will be turned around. Of course, any team, like, I mean, for, for us, the moment, we, first, we, in the Alliance for National Transformation, we know that the... the human factor, the human resource, the nature, the character, the levels of training and education is at the core of the development process. So there must be specific, deliberate, conscious investments in education, in health, and food security. Yes. Because that human being yeah. must be well-educated, must be well-trained. He or she must be healthy, and they must be well-fed. Mm. And of course, in agriculture, also besides being a, uh, a factor in the health of the population, you must also look at it as being a, uh, uh, an area where we have uh, advantage, 70% of the population, co including uh, uh, in, the, in the agricultural sector. And we have got a comparative advantage in regard to that. And you can build industry based on agriculture, being agro-processing. Mm. As you create and advance skills in that regard, and then you advance to other areas. Of course, you need infrastructure in terms of energy, in terms of road networks. Environmental protection. Because we have a threat yes. in, that, in, that, in that regard. But of course, part of the biggest impact on terms of environmental degradation is low economic uh, development. Because if you have 80% uh, of the population depending on firewood to cook <laughs> and they cannot afford gas, so how will you transition them? Unless you create an economy that is developing so that people transition from being use of firewood and institutions into using gas and electricity and and the rest, and of mm. course, in, uh, infrastructure in, in energy for industrialization, and education for building of skills to work in the in the in the industries. Mm. But the core thing being vehicles of governance, because if you look at programs, you can have contention about whether this one would work would have worked faster than the other. Yes, in terms of whatever programs are presented. If all regimes from 60s had implemented the programs they have always had, made public, talked about, and they were able even to implement them up to 60-70%, this country would be in the first world. None has had the focus and the discipline mm. to do so. And that's why we find there is a problem. That's what needs to be fixed. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Jennifer, for, for those uh, interesting closures. And uh, uh, Sarah, uh, uh, Dr. Sarah, thank you very much. And I find uh, which for uh, your regular uh, interactions with us here on the chat show and Civic Specs TV. And also, importantly, for our viewers out there, thank you very much for being added followers of the program. Like we promised, we need to bring programs that would really, really help and educate our, our populace, our constituencies out there. And this is what we mean by some of these programs. All those who are into policy and all this, this is where you should have been and this is where you need to be. This conversation will shape uh, the country going forward. And uh, like uh, old Milton say, we are for Uganda and uh, Uganda is ours. That's the slogan that old Milton had. And uh, from here and the crew out uh, there of Civic Space TV, I would want to say thank you. 
but continuously have this conversation. Follow, go, uh, go on on our uh, Twitter uh, hashtag, ChatShowUG, and subscribe to, to our Civic Space TV uh, YouTube channel for more and more updates. Uh, thank you. We meet next week.